Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the inland Northwest. I'm Kim Erickson. I'm an ocularist, which is an artificial eye maker. I was a math major, and I wasn't enjoying it very much, and I was looking to shift directions. I'm um, considering architecture school at the time that my father popped up and said, maybe you ought to give this a try. And I didn't know my father very well, and I wanted to get to know him, so I thought I'd come do this for six months, and I ended up staying 23 years. We use the peg now to control the position of the shell. The pressure of the eyelids would press the shell back into the socket and sometimes distort it. We use a peg on the front, we pull it forward and re relieve all that pressure from the socket and get a more accurate impression. Look left and right, and up and down. It looks good. I'm going to pull this peg out a little bit and start the impression. We'll vent the air out the top. Well, this material will give us every wrinkle in the socket. It, it gives great accuracy. Well, I paint with raw plexiglass called methyl methacrylate. And I use about a half set version of it, which is a syrupy looking stuff as a sealer between coats and also to thicken the paint and control its viscosity. I use Windsor Newton number no. seven red sable brush as a thing of beauty. The iris is built in layers layers of muscle tissue, and we start with the deepest layer, physically deepest layer in the iris, and paint that color first, and then layer the other colors on top of it. Probably 20 or 30 layers of paint and sealer on each iris. The way I paint has changed. I'm more structure-oriented and less color-oriented until later in the eye. We put the layers on, sometimes just a few markings at a time, and then seal them up to see how they're affecting the layer underneath don't want to get too carried away. So I, I hate to redo them, so I, I like to move deliberately and make sure I get them right the first time. But I do redo them, it's the nature of the beast. The painting is really my favorite part of this job. It used to drive me nuts. The first 10 years, I was like pulling teeth to paint eyes and then something shifted and it just got to be fun. I think it was really one of my cousins kind of tricked me. He said, you know, you need to warm up. Why don't you just paint a quick one, kind of a rough study, and then come in and paint the real one after you've roughed it out. And what I found was that if I quit trying so hard and just roughed it out, I actually did a great paint job. <laughs> yeah, I never did do the second copy. It got me to relax a little bit. It doesn't respond to being overthought very well. well. I hate to admit it, but I, I do doodle eyes when I'm doodling. I can't help it. When there's only four of us who use this technique, there's no one we can buy machinery from, so we have to make all of our own. We modify other lathes, and you can build quite a lot of stuff with these. We use a tool maker's lathe to build the machines that I use in the other room, for instance, that spinner I put the pupil on with. Yeah, it was based on a piece of contact lens equipment that was used for polishing. Feather the edge of the pupil out a little bit with dilute black paint so that it doesn't look like it's drilled into the plastic. It gives it a shadowy effect. My dad was heavily involved in contact lens manufacture back in the 50s and developed a lot of machinery that some of it's still in use today. You get to know somebody when you paint them an eye. Okay, I'm going to use this roll of thread, my antique thread, to put the blood vessels on. Check that out. Ten cents. It's older than I am. <laughs> it's nylon, very fine fibered nylon, and my father found the right stuff back in the 50s and bought enough of it to last about 500 years. So fray it out and glue it down and then push it around and position it so that it matches the same basic pattern as the patient's veining. Yeah, the thread's a pretty cool piece of this. Um, before thread, they, some people used pencil, colored pencil or paint. But to get a vein that's as irregular as this is just 
about impossible to do freehand. There's something about the thread that the way it lays out looks more natural. And I'm going to trim the excess away from the edges. The veining is all very subtle compared to the painting the iris. All of the, the colors are very diluted in comparison, but there's probably more of them. So I'll start with the deepest color, which on most eyes is blue. It only takes a little bit of color to change the white of the eye a lot. We work in very, very dilute coats. I think the first hundred eyes I veined, I must have had to redo at least once, sometimes twice. Get the paint on too heavy, it get too dark, I'd have to wipe it all off and start over. So the next step is to cast a thin layer of clear over the front. Process it under heat and pressure and then grind the front surface smooth and adjust it to make the eyelids shape up the way we want them to. And my job really is to make something that someone can put on and be comfortable, look in the mirror and decide they look okay and get on with their life. That's, that's it. And there's a side benefit that I get to do something I'm proud of, but that's really not my job. Considering what I know about myself now, um, I think this is probably a perfect blend of of demands on my skills. This is, this is ideal. If I weren't doing this for a living, I'd do something like this for a hobby. I'd be tying flies or, you know, carving ducks or something.